Ah, breathing. Something we all must do to live. Something so easy that you can do it without thinking about it. What does this all have to do with hydrogen, you ask? Well, hydrogen is a gas and you can breathe it. In fact, hydrogen inhalation devices are becoming more popular in the marketplace. But it's not so simple. There are some things you need to know before you go down that road. These are the four things you must know about hydrogen inhalation. So up to this point, we've mainly explained the details about H2 in general and H2 dissolve into water. But hydrogen inhalation is a trend growing in popularity here in the US and for good reason. Now we've already talked about the details of what molecular hydrogen is, also known as H2 and hydrogen gas. We also talked in depth about hydrogen water and how hydrogen gas can be dissolved into water. So if you're confused by any of this, it's best to go to those videos so you can get all caught up. But considering hydrogen is a gas, I would think understanding that it's possible to inhale it will be pretty easy. But let's start with some basic need to know info. What is it? Breathing hydrogen gas is just another administration method to get hydrogen gas into your body. The benefits we talked about before with hydrogen water apply here too, with some variations, but we'll get to that in a sec. Hydrogen gas is able to be inhaled by using a special device that produces the gas. Then usually it's inhaled through a nasal cannula, which if you do not know what that is, it's the tiny tubes that you stick in your nose, usually for oxygen purposes in hospitals or for people who need to carry around oxygen tanks. There are different types of products for breathing hydrogen which I will discuss more in a little bit. There are also different devices you can use to breathe hydrogen, whether it's pure hydrogen gas, hydrogen oxygen mixture, or hydrogen gas mixed with air. But I'll get more into that too. So what are the advantages of hydrogen inhalation? Breathing hydrogen gas allows people to inhale higher milligrams of molecular hydrogen per day than drinking hydrogen water. Hydrogen inhalation appears to be a better delivery system of molecular hydrogen to the circulatory system and it can yield higher concentrations of molecular hydrogen within organs and tissues. Inhalation seems to be better suited for traumatic injuries or acute disorders or diseases, such as traumatic brain injury, heart attacks, cardiac arrest, strokes, etc. Asia is way ahead of us in America in regards to hydrogen research and implementing hydrogen therapy. The Japanese Ministry of Health, which is kind of equivalent to our FDA, has already approved hydrogen inhalation as a certified advanced medical treatment for post-cardiac arrest syndrome, and they are implementing it in hospitals. Hydrogen inhalation is a great way to ingest hydrogen without drinking a lot of water. Obviously, I don't want to take away from the importance of staying hydrated and drinking plenty of water. But with some hydrogen water products, you have to drink a ridiculous amount of water per day to get what is considered to be therapeutic based on the research. It would be an advantage for those with kidney problems who cannot drink a lot of water. And also the elderly or handicapped people who have a hard time getting up and going to the bathroom frequently. Basically, anyone who has a hard time drinking a lot of water this will be an easy way to get more hydrogen in you. Another big advantage with breathing hydrogen is you can get a lot into your body in a small amount of time. This helps greatly with intermittent exposure. The scientific literature points to intermittent exposure of H2 being more beneficial than constant exposure. Constant exposure may desensitize metabolic pathways over time. Hydrogen gas is appearing to be primarily a gaseous signal modulator that will stimulate metabolic pathways, signal transduction, activate a host of transcription factors leading to gene expression. It normally takes two hours or more after cells are exposed to elevated levels of H2 to see changes in signal transduction. This effect can last hours or even weeks after hydrogen has already left the body. So you can see how drinking water with a low dissolved hydrogen concentration and having to drink a lot to reach the daily therapeutic target that by drinking that water all day, you are exposing yourself to an extended low dose of hydrogen without letting your body come back down to its basal level. This is how your body can get desensitized to hydrogen and the benefits may diminish over time. But with inhalation, you can breathe hydrogen once or twice per day and give your body plenty of time so you won't get used to it. Speaking of gene expression, drinking hydrogen water has been shown in studies to be more effective than inhalation. So I would say that may be one disadvantage of breathing hydrogen. Since altering gene expression 
is one of its main mechanisms. Ultimately, there's evidence that supports drinking H2 water and inhaling hydrogen at the same time or in conjunction to one another, and that it provides a greater therapeutic effect on gene expression than doing both therapies separately, which is what we do at my house. Now, the next important question, how much do you need? In terms of dose, breathing H2 works a little bit differently than H2 water. With H2 water, there is a preliminary suggested milligram per day minimum that one should strive for. This comes with knowing the milligram per liter of H2 that's in your water. Being able to measure the H2 concentration and knowing the volume of water to determine the milligram. You can learn more about that by clicking the card. But hydrogen inhalation is primarily about the H2 gas flow rate and or the H2 concentration percentage. The flow rate is how much hydrogen gas is actually being produced and coming out of the cannula each minute. This is typically represented in a milliliter per minute number. Basically, the faster the milliliter per minute flow rate, the faster the H2 will saturate the blood, thus saturating the cells, tissue, and organs faster as well. Also, the higher the flow rate, the better the device will be at compensating for the losses of gas from the cannula. When using any type of cannula, there will always be some gas that escapes into the atmosphere. Hydrogen is just too light as a gas, and it goes wherever it wants to go. But with higher flow rates, there is more room for that loss. The scientific literature is suggesting that for H2 inhalation to be therapeutic, it needs to be in the range of 2 to 4 percent by volume at normal resting breathing rate. A normal resting breathing rate is around 5 to 6 liters per minute. So that would mean the flow rate would need to be at least 120 to 240 milliliters per minute to be therapeutic at normal resting breathing rates. But obviously, the higher the better. The research suggests that there is definitely an amount that is not enough, but there is not an amount that appears to be too much or too high. This is due to the fact that our lungs will simply exhale the extra hydrogen gas and H2 truly doesn't build up in our system. In fact, H2 for ingestion purposes has an extremely high safety profile. You can find out more about that in our video about the safety of H2. Now, it's important to note that hydrogen gas is flammable at a concentration of 4.7 to 75%. However, it's highly diffusible into air, so it will quickly diffuse into air to non-flammable levels upon exiting the cannula. Still, it's necessary to take the precaution of removing anything that can spark combustion when operating these products. And finally, the last thing you need to know about hydrogen inhalation is, how do you get it? Currently, there are three ways or types of machines that allow you to breathe hydrogen. There is pure hydrogen gas, hydrogen and oxygen mixture, and H2 mixed with air. Here are some quick details about each one. Pure H2 generators use a PM membrane and distilled water to produce pure H2. The gas from these systems can only be inhaled using a nasal cannula so that you can breathe in air from the atmosphere in addition to H2. The reason for this, well, you need oxygen to live, so there's that. This just means you should not use a facial mask with this type of device. Hydrogen and oxygen systems are also called oxyhydrogen or Brown's gas systems. In these systems, the gas is produced through water electrolysis without a membrane. They use distilled water with an electrolyte such as sodium hydroxide. The way it works is the gas coming out of the machine will always be 66% hydrogen and 33% oxygen. The H2 and air mixture units will usually be two to 7% H2 by volume mixed with air pumped from the atmosphere. This type of device is usually not seen on the market. However, H2 mixed with air is seen more in the research studies along with oxyhydrogen. This is mainly for safety purposes in a research setting and not for therapeutic purposes. Also using a mixed gas allows you to be able to use a facial mask. All three have one thing in common, hydrogen gas. And that's the goal, right? To get legit hydrogen gas, get it in you and get enough. Another benefit to hydrogen gas generators are there are attachments that allow you to bubble the gas into water. So now not only can you breathe hydrogen, but you can produce hydrogen water or bubble the gas into a foot bath or saline. Or there are attachments where you can localize the gas to a specific place of need. So for example, if you have elbow pain, you can use an attachment to specifically direct hydrogen gas right to your elbow. 
And since H2 is so small, it can diffuse right through your skin and get into tissues and cells very fast. This administration method appears very promising just on an anecdotal level as we have heard awesome stories about how well it works. Now that hydrogen inhalation is becoming more popular, many hydrogen water devices are trying to capitalize by including a breathing attachment. You have to be careful when it comes to these devices. Most of them do not have enough power to provide adequate amounts of hydrogen gas for breathing based on the research. The chemistry of hydrogen gas generators is not a mystery. Hydrogen gas production volume through water electrolysis is directly related to amperage or current flow within the water cells. This fact allows us to easily calculate H2 gas production. For example, one amp will generate 7.6 milliliters of hydrogen gas per minute at SATP. Now many portable hydrogen water generators and even some hydrogen water pitchers only operate at one amp. So you can see without even testing the gas coming out of the unit, we already know the gas production is gonna be very low. Remember, we discussed earlier that the research points to 120 to 240 milliliters per minute being the therapeutic minimum for H2 inhalation. It takes a fairly significant amount of power to produce hydrogen gas at those levels. In fact, you need at least 14.5 amps to have a hydrogen production of 120 milliliters per minute. For my sister company, H2 Hub, I test many H2 generators. I test their amperage, apply voltage, and test the flow rate of the actual gas output coming from the device. Our calculations based on the power and hydrogen production always correlates with each other based on my testing. So that means based on chemistry that a product will not make more hydrogen gas than the power that is applied. Now it may make less because of losses or power that must be applied to other components or inefficiencies of the device, but never more. Unless of course, you know a way to defy the laws of physics and chemistry. So that was the four main things you needed to know about hydrogen gas inhalation. Did I answer your questions? Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about hydrogen gas inhalation or how it works. Please like and share this video and of course, subscribe. Be sure to check us out on Patreon to get exclusive behind the scenes looks and other benefits. And that's your dose of H2, gas in two minutes.